G'day. Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, I'm an emergency physician, and today we're going to look at clavicle fractures, the essential things you need to know when working in the emergency department. Now, of course, clavicle fractures are common and they occur secondary to falls and sporting injuries, as we can see here. Most commonly it occurs as a fall on the outstretched arm, the force being transmitted up into the shoulder and the fracture occurring at the relatively thin mid shaft of the clavicle. Ominously you might hear a crack as you tumble from your skateboard or your bike and this might be picked up on someone's smartphone or their head cam. Now these mid shaft fractures may be just a simple crack fracture but more often they're displaced because the weight of the arm pulls down the distal bit while the proximal bit is being pulled up and posteriorly by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So they turn up in ED, usually supporting their arm, and you may see the telltale lump over the area. Now these displaced fractures hurt, so a bit of intranasal fentanyl or triage would be wise, as well as a supportive triangular sling. So what are the traps to look out for on physical examination? Well, the obvious ones first. Is it open? Is the skin tented over the fracture? Now check for other injuries such as the unusual but, but occasionally occurs posterior dislocation of the shoulder or even rarely a pneumothorax. Now that's a chance to finally use your expensive bedside ultrasound machine and look for sliding of the lung on that side. Now there is a bit of controversy about which of these mid shaft fractures should be referred to an orthopaedic surgeon. Sure, if there's no displacement, then put them into a triangular sling, not a figure of eight sling because that's more uncomfortable and hasn't shown any improvement um, in follow-up in these patients. Give them simple analgesia and refer them to the physio because they'll stay in the sling for about six to eight weeks but they'll get range of movement exercise by physio after you know, one to two weeks. Conversely, those uh, fractures which are comminuted, those which are displaced more than 100%, uh, those which have overlap of sort of one and a half to two centimeters or more, they all need to be referred to an orthopedic surgeon for a plate and screws or a pin. There is a movement in the literature that um, any mid shaft fracture that has any displacement, angulation or overlap should be referred to an orthopaedic surgeon uh, so that they can plate them early, have operative intervention and get people back to activity earlier. Uh, certainly that's what I do in the institution I work at. However, in the institution that you work, work at, you might find that the orthopaedic surgeons will tolerate some mild angulation or displacement and treat them conservatively, especially in the older age group. Remember also that um, if you've got a more complex fracture you're going to be referring, they may want to have a CT scan of that area first to help plan their um, operative intervention. So we've spoken about the most common clavicular fracture, that is the mid shaft fracture. The next most common is the lateral fractures. Now these are all pretty easy because all of these lateral fractures should be referred to the orthopaedic surgeons in my opinion. They're classified according to whether they're medial to the acromioclavicular ligaments, whether they go through the acromioclavicular ligaments and rip off the conoid, whether they're lateral to the acromioclavicular ligaments, uh, or whether they're lateral plus they involve the articular joint. But all of these, apart from the really lateral ones that are not displaced, will end up having to have an operation. So I would say, speak to the orthopaedic surgeons about all of these and we can decide which of those may not have to have operative intervention. So we've covered the mid shaft, we've covered the lateral fractures, the last group and the rarest are the medial fractures, you know, where the clavicle meets the sternoclavicular joint. Now, there's really good ligamentous support here. So most of the time, if you have a fracture there, is treated conservatively because it doesn't get displaced. Occasionally though it can be displaced and displaced backwards 
Now, if you think about it, that can be bad because it can have vascular compression and needs urgently to go to the operating theatre and be pulled anteriorly back into position. Well, I reckon that'll just about do for clavicular fractures in one coffee. I'll see you all next time. Stay upright. Cheers.